this episode we are joined by Saurabh Banerjee from United We Care Anirudh Siddharth from IPV and Mayan Kansal from InsureStack For those who don't already know Mayan Kansal he is the founder and CEO of InsureStack an insurtech startup which is building an AI powered insurance super app InsureStack has recently launched InsureGPT a gen AI powered conversational insurance assistant Mayan has been in the startup ecosystem for more than 4 years as part of the founding team of two startups. He is an engineer who is currently pursuing an associate degree in general insurance from the Insurance Institute of India. Let's continue our engaging discussion with our guests. So uh Anirudh, let's start with you. Uh what are the uh, major funding challenges faced by gen AI startups in India? And uh we would also like to understand uh, how you see these uh, challenges evolving in the future and uh, what strategies can startups adopt to overcome them wonderful question dheeraj um, i think uh, i'll take the second part of the question first because we spoke about value proposition and also about problem statement in the last episode uh, of the discussion right so maybe uh, to just give a recap right so i just went back after the episode and uh, type the question that you asked me uh, in the open ai chat gpt right and uh, just to, to cross check as to what my response is and what does it gives right so ultimately it gives a little generic uh, 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 generic explanation right because obviously when you give more prompts it might tend to give you a more focused response might be closer to what you want but it is predominantly a little more generic and a person who can't give a proper prompt can't really use this platform effectively right so that would be like a major disadvantage in my view because you should be well trained or maybe at least you should know how to talk with prompts so that you give effective prompts right apart from that uh, in terms of uh, your your second your second part of the question in terms of what is that that will qualify right for a for a startup to challenge in this see uh, I need to. I want to keep it short because uh, it is same uh, like that. The value proposition has to be more stronger, uh, and uh, it needs to solve an effective problem, and it has to cater to use case specific, and it should have a varied use case. Only then a startup will thrive in this, right? Uh, and in terms of uh, certain uh, maybe problems you asked, in terms of what are the problems that a startup in this field might encounter, right? See, when a technology comes into any country. there are two things one people draw references from other countries as to how it has performed and always it is uh, observed that us might be a little a uh, number of years ahead than india right maybe ev might be a little more mature than now this coming year so the first question that uh, uh, we at india at least what we try to answer ourselves is that how ready are we right how ready again is not only the investors right uh, how ready are the customers uh in india or in maybe developing countries where your solutions could be catered to are ready so most of the cases the answer would be that the market is still nascent it is still yet to be tested so that would be a problem where you need to create more awareness and what i mean by awareness is you need to have a deep understanding of what is its potential what are the use cases currently how it is done and with generative ai how is it going to be transformed you have to show some case studies so only then you will you can build awareness so that is a main uh, challenge that i foresee because any new technology or any new disruption that comes it takes some time for the market to adapt to that not not if the the founders thinking might be maybe 3x ahead of what others think of but you need to be on the same page where others are also supported so i i feel that is one of the main challenge second uh, again uh, would be the high rd cost because you can build a, uh, a gpt right or a, or maybe an open ai or a ai platform but how do you train it over a period of time or how do you develop the intricacies for a particular use case i think rnd would be a significant catch that i think the founders should be uh, looking at uh, evaluating it in early stages so that it can accordingly raise investments and investors it for investors it will be slightly a gray area where how do you evaluate the r&d cost is something which would be a, a certainty or uncertainty i would call uh, third would be in terms of market uncertainty how the market will respond it how the use case will work whether it will work it will succeed not succeed right because if suppose uh, you on, get on board in a particular sector and it doesn't work 
initially the view would be that it doesn't work in the sector at all so how do you reiterate faster how do you fail faster and build a product which is testable is something i feel is a challenge for the founders which they have to be very well aware of before they start building something big right so uh, and also showcasing the proof of concepts as to how the beta what is the beta that they've built how are, how is it working how is it adapting how is it uh, doing all that is what something they have to be very very focused in which vertical they are looking at look they can look at even at b2g so uh, any government opportunities there this this could be effectively utilized right so all these are some of the challenges that i think government i mean sorry the, the founder has to be uh, aware of and before he goes for a fundraise i think he should have answers or at least he should probe into these to understand the ecosystem better as to how it would, how it is evaluating the issue got it uh, these were some very interesting points that you highlighted uh, thank you so much anirudh for this so sort of since we are uh, talking about challenges uh, would you like to highlight some other challenges that the indian genai startups face currently and and uh, uh, we would also like to understand what can the ecosystem players including the startups themselves uh, do to address these challenges so uh, thanks uh, dheeraj so i'll uh, start from where anirudh left and i partially agree with anirudh and partially do not agree with anirudh i'll tell you where i agree and i'll tell you where i do not agree and i'll, I'll elaborate the problem moment in four major categories uh, uh, actually it will go to fifth one but uh, let's focus on the first four uh, categories in the problem statement first in uh, generative ai uh, uh, generative ai has begun the buzzword in 2022 but the research and development started happening well uh, uh, i mean it was like 2015 2016 2017 a major paper came uh, uh, and that's when uh, that, that was like attention is all you need uh, paper that created the whole transformer model point is uh, there is nothing which is overnight success uh, even people who are trying to uh, fine tune a ready uh, made fundamental model they are afraid those businesses will not have any defensibility because uh, the entry and the exit barrier because it's very easy to train a uh, uh, to train a fundamental model but it's very easy to fine tune a existing model. right so a lot of startups they are only focusing about fine tuning i'm not telling fine tuning is not important Go, going to market is important and you know once you go to the market you have to focus on building a fundamental model that, which you can carry forward like uh, I'll, i'll just give an example we built a mental health chatbot we started in 2019 we worked like 3 4 years hard work we built the, built the bot but we have not touched a single uh, large language model today even today because we know that large language models hallucinate and we cannot allow a mental health bot to hallucinate we cannot allow that to happen right so uh, i mean we we have to create parallel solution and problem is parallel solutions are easier said than done because when we talk about fundamental model building uh, we just do not have any ecosystem available in india what we have as the ecosystem available is we have a fundamental model how do we fine tune that fundamental model for a particular use case right the ecosystem to build a fundamental model is not the way we use a fundamental model to productize it. right so we are always doing it from you know the last piece of the story not that indians are not there in fundamental model building most of the fundamental models were built by indians but not in india why did it happen because it is not it's very expensive like when when i talk talk about like uh, uh, the research r&d one part second part is the training third part is the data pipeline getting the data right so where do i get the label data because Uh, ai does not have real intelligence it's like junk in junk out if the original data is junk the output is bound to be junk so where do i get that original data pipeline a b how do i train that large amount of data into the real system thousands of gpus are required thousands of gpu hours are required and gpu is expensive it's not a four person scale so we need a funding uh, thing which is probably not, it may not be funding it's less just availability of a lot of gpus in a collaborative space which we can you know get it 
second possibility for the ecosystem so i'm also answering a part of the second question which is how the ecosystem can we can create an ecosystem in india which creates a labeled data set for the whole country right so a lot of uh, 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 you know big companies have started creating similar data sets like c4 was created by google right so that's a very important data set for all uh, us uh, uh, who are data scientists who work with that we should have government of india it was a great project which is a bhashini project right we have to make bhashini like project as an open source project right so label data set is a major thing uh, that's a second uh, uh, problem that we have third problem is about not having a clear guideline over what can we do and what can we not do because something like gdpr we just can't build any uh, uh, large language models because there is a simple clause like right to be forgotten in data science once i train it you know billions of parameters are getting trained on weights and biases there is absolutely no way for me to allow anyone to be forgotten i can allow that person to be anonymized so so right to be anonymized versus right to be forgotten if we have a clear guideline by government of india or any policy making framework that this can be done and this cannot be done because we are always working on the gray zone what can i do even though i know how to do it but we just don't have the clarity problem is if i invest enough and then the clarity comes against what i have invested for Uh, the whole investment is a sunk cost right that's a fourth one is generative ai revenue models uh, may not have few of the traditionally popular revenue models the popular revenue models in this particular market is ad based revenue model most of the generative ai uh, may not work with those ad based revenue model in india we do not have a ecosystem of a subscription based eco- uh, 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 revenue model generative ai may or only work with subscription based ecosystem wherein people have to pay for what they use probably in a subscription basis and they use it there is nothing called free and then powered by some advertisement because that pretty much defeats the purpose of generative ai right so the new sort of revenue model should come this should also require a lot of you know uh, uh, like nascom and all like educating the customer uh, which is like a new revenue model has to uh, uh, be grown in india if we do not know how to you know uh, work with a subscription based model large language models will not have a long term defensible business in a country uh, that of india uh the final one is again uh, where i started from is uh, uh we have to think about decentralization even today even though the code is out there on open a decade back code was important right now the data is important so data is not out there in open so this is where if we have you know the control of data by a particular in entity or a group of particular entities the startup ecosystem does not thrive so this is where decentralization like government initiatives intergovernmental organizations uh, 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 like uh, platforms like uh, nascom we have to come together and as a startup as well we have to come together to create the decentralized ecosystem of technology the technology should be made accessible for anyone and with a lesser amount of entry barrier because here the quality of technology and quality of uh, processing power is a humongous data uh, uh, i mean entry barrier best of the minds best of the talents i work with iit delhi even they don't have more than one two gpus right so so if the best of the professors they don't have the access to the technology and quality then it cannot happen I'm sorry it was a pretty long answer for a very short question but i had to address no 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 uh, i think uh, it's always interesting to look at things through two di- very different lenses and uh, thank you so much sara for uh, putting this forward so clearly for the uh, viewers and uh, and i think uh, where there are uh, challenges there are always opportunities so uh, mayan uh, would just like to understand from you uh, what opportunities do you see uh, for gni startups in india and uh, you know what can be done especially on part of the startups so that they can seize those opportunities which lie ahead 
right absolutely dheeraj so i think uh, industry and uh, you know all stakeholders together will solve for the problems that i think anirudh and saurav mentioned uh, i have two broad perspectives which i would quickly brief right in terms of opportunities very uniquely for indian ecosystem right so uh, think of this right every industry and service that the world outsources to us right we set up this unique opportunity to introduce llms or let's say large, uh, you know generative ai capabilities in these industries for example your uh, customer servicing industry is right uh, we are like the backbone of that industry globally so we have this unique opportunity to basically introduce uh, you know uh, generative ai into that industry and let's say aid the process of that human uh, in the loop right so that's a very unique in, uh, opportunity broadly uh, that india today has right and we have this right uh, pool of talent uh, in terms of you know engineers who are supposed to be building that now secondly if you look internally also right so with more and more uh, vernacular languages being incorporated by you know different large language models uh, every product and service be it government or you know private that is supposed to let's say cater to uh, india to and beyond so basically the bharat uh, part right uh, with the vernacular language supports being introduced in the distribution of these you know services and products i think again that's a very unique opportunity where uh, we can solve for uh, this distribution in a very meaningful way and solve for problems and services which are you know kind of very unique to indian uh, you know buyer uh, broadly so i think those are the two broad perspectives that i have uh, in terms of very unique opportunities that i feel indian uh, ecosystem today has uh, where you know we can encash this opportunity uh, in a in a way which is you know uh, really solves for efficiency right so in the for, for, uh, first uh, you know uh, perspective that i just mentioned so we have this opportunity to improve the quality of service that we deliver to the world right and in that pursuit also capture let's say the larger market share uh, with respect to whatever we have today and of course uh, solving for india specific problems in india uh, while incorporating uh, generative ai is again a very meaningful way to you know kind, kind of uh, contribute in a for profit way uh, you know and build on the generative ai uh, capability so yeah that, that's that's my perspective now oh, uh, that's very uh, insightful Uh, so, uh, folks, uh, with that, it is a wrap on this episode of Tech Talks. Uh, thank you so much, Anirudh, Saurav, and Mayan for joining and giving uh, our viewers a clear understanding of the GNI startup landscape in India. On behalf of Nascom Insights, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for your valuable contributions and insights. Uh, viewers, for uh, we hope you found this discussion insightful. do share your feedback or if you want us to do another episode on gen ai do write to us in the uh, comment section below uh, for more insights on the indian tech ecosystem please like share and subscribe to nascom insights youtube channel have a great day ahead thanks thanks everyone